<laughs> Hello and welcome to what might be my let's play I've been most looking forward to of anything on the channel I've ever done to date so far. This is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. And we're going to get into it pretty soon. I'm just going to start with a kind of disclaimer and seam setting. Um, this game means a lot to me. It's probably my favourite single game if you were to force me to narrow it down, which I don't like, but hey, if, if you were to do it, it would probably be this one. Um, and it's a very unusual Zelda game. Uh, this is something I'm going to keep coming back through throughout the uh, Let's Play, but this game is about, unlike any other Zelda game, it's about the journey, not the destination. And that's a key thing to keep in mind, and when it comes to the way I've paced the Let's Play, do try and keep that in mind. This is going to be for me a kind of, for want of a better phrase, deeper Let's Play than some of my other ones. Um, because A, this game is a game that merits kind of interesting, kind of philosophical and conceptual exploration. And also this game is very personal to me for a number of mostly good reasons, but one kind of bad reason. And as far as that goes, I also would like to start with a disclaimer of I've actually never played the 3DS version of it as well. Um, so that's going to be fun to see what's different with this, because this is new to me as well. So without further ado... Let's get started with Majora's Mask. In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend, a legend held dearly by the royal family that tells of a boy. A boy who, after battling evil and saving Hyrule, crept away from the land that had made him a legend. Done with the battles he once waged across time, he embarked on a journey, a secret and personal journey. A journey in search of a beloved and invaluable friend. A friend with whom he parted ways when he finally fulfilled his heroic destiny and took his place among legends. <laughs> you two fairies did great. I wonder if he has anything good on him. Huh, this guy? Well, that shouldn't be a problem. Ooh, ooh, what a pretty ocarina! Hey, Skull Kid, let me touch it, I wanna see! <laughs> you can't, Tail! What would you do if you dropped it and broke it? No way, you can't touch it! Oh, but, but sis, why can't I try it out too? Thank <laughs> you. 
And just like that, we're in control. So I'm going to introduce this game and talk about concepts, assuming that you have not watched, seen, or played in any form Ocarina of Time. It's not necessary for the plot, and it's not necessarily mostly for the controls. So controls-wise, you move around, and B swings your sword. And if you walk towards edges, you will jump. A slightly different thing about this game is that you'll, you'll do weird flips when you jump, which is quite cool. What is with that stupid horse of yours? It doesn't listen to a word that's said to it. Uh, there's no point riding a thing like that, so I did you a favour and got rid of it. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo, why the sad face? I just thought I'd have a little fun with you. Oh, come now. Do you really think you can beat me as I am now? Fool! Now that's a good look for you. Ah, oh, you'll stay here looking that way forever. Wait for me, I'm still here! Tail, you can't leave without me! You! If I wasn't dealing with you, I wouldn't have got separated from my brother! Wow, don't just sit there, Deku boy! Do something! Why are you looking at me like that? What, is there something stuck on my face? Will you stop staring and open that door for me? Please, come on, a helpless little girl is asking you! So hurry up! Oh, Tail, I wonder if that child will be alright on his own. So, a lot of things just happened there. We have a new body. Normal thing to say. Um, so we are a cursed to be a Deku at the moment. And we didn't really learn the controls for Link, so there's not, not much point going through the differences. But hey, press A to open doors. And now we can just proceed onwards. Hey, wait for me. Don't leave me behind. So, um, that stuff back there. I, um, uh, apologize. Uh, so take me with you. You want to know about that Skull Kid who just ran off, right? Well, I just so happen to have an idea of where he might be going. Take me with you and I'll help you out. Deal? Please? Good. So then it's settled. Now then, I will be your partner, or at least until we catch that Skull Kid. My name's Tackle, so it's uh, good to meet you, or uh, whatever. Now that we've got all that straightened out, can we please stop messing around and get moving? If I figure something out, press right on the D-pad and I'll tell you. Hopefully you'll manage to get by without my help until then. Yes, I agree with Link. That absolutely merits a breaking of the fourth wall. Tackle! Little different to the fairy companions we've been used to in previous games. Hey, if I call you, press D-pad right right away. I can tell you're not very really used to your Deku scrub body yet. Alright then, listen up. If you press and hold A as a Deku scrub you, you, while standing on a flower, you can dive into it. If you wait a bit before releasing A, you'll launch out of the fly flower. Press A while flying to descend. Remember that you can press R to change your view while fly flying. Figure out what works best for you. Did you get that? Oh, you're the owl, aren't you? Um, press A when you're on the ground to perform a spin attack. So yes, we hold A, we can dive into a flower, and then let go and spoing, up we go. And holding R indeed gives us a top-down view, which is new to the 3DS version and very handy for later stuff. Press A, drops back down again. S 
so we are it like this game already like this is when it starts to feel different from other Zelda games already because this is just it's a very bizarre feeling a lot of the other ones start off like very traditional um, kind of fairy stories that makes like oh yeah by the way chest which you can press A to open and get Deku nuts plus B while flying to drop a Deku bomb but impact it makes a blinding flash freezing enemies in their tracks do you know how to use items it's pretty important Tap the blue button on the lower screen to open up the item screen. Select an item using the control stick and assign it to a button. You can also tap and slide to assign an item, so whatever you like best. Once you've assigned an item, press the button. Blah blah blah, standard Zelda rules. So yeah, if you click on items, and then move my Deku nuts over to say X, I can then use them with X. Ho ha! Um, yes, we should probably talk about- I was gonna talk about- well, I'll finish like, talking about- yeah, most of the other Zelda games start like a kind of traditional fairy tale, like you're on an island or something like that, and- and- or, 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 or like in the woods and you're being called upon as like a child of destiny whereas this one is a very strange opening it's just very bizarre generally no bad thing for me i really like it hey come on press l and talk to me so you can hold target things by pressing l and then you can get tattles information on them there you go see you can do it if you try when i fly over to people or objects use l to look at them so you can interact with them use l targeting to talk to people even if they're far away or if there's no one to target you can use l to look straight ahead but enough about that now, come over to this tree and check it out. But yes, I'll talk about the visualizer more in a bit, but it's basically just my way of keeping track of stuff. Um, to put it very simply. Anyway, over here we can interact with this tree. It's strange, but the way you look right now sort of reminds me of this tree. It looks all dark and gloomy, almost like it could start crying any second now. How sad. Yeah, that thing is fucked up and... I'll talk about that more later, it's... Anyway, let's not dwell on it too much for now, let's head through here. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? <laughs> I own the Happy Mask Shop. I travel far and wide in search of masks. During my travels, a very important mask was stolen from me by an imp in the woods. So here I am at a loss, and now I've found you. Now don't think me rude, but I have been following you. For I know of a way to return you to your former self. If you can get back the precious item that was stolen from you, I will return you to normal. In exchange, all I ask is that you get back my precious mask that that imp stole from me. <laughs> what? Is it not a simple task? Why, to someone like you, it should by no means be a difficult task. Except, uh, the only thing is, I'm rather a busy fellow. And I must leave this place in three days. How grateful I would be if you could bring it back to me before my time here is up. <laughs> but yes, you'll be fine. I see you are young and have tremendous courage. I'm sure you'll find it right away. Oh, and one more thing. Please be so kind as to get direct your gaze over there for a moment. That strange stone over there, do you see it? It's called a Sheikah Stone. When the world has weighed you down with worry, crawl inside it and let it show you the way. If you ever find yourself lost on your grand adventure, seek the counsel of this once of this wise old stone. It will surely help you on your noble quest. Well then, I am counting on you. Yes, he's a deeply creepy character. We met him in Ocarina of Time, and boy does he only dial it up on this one. Anyway, I don't want to wait around so much because the world awaits. Dawn of the first day. 72 hours remain. He gives me the creeps. That mask salesman was the... Oh, uh, sorry, just, just thinking aloud. But three days! Even if we never sleep, that still leaves us with a measly 72 hours! Talk about demanding! Well, don't just stand there, we're gonna go see the Great Fairy! Look, you wanna sign the Skull Kid, don't you? The Great Fairy will know what he's been up to, she watches over everything. And just between you and me, even the Skull Kid is no match for the Great Fairy. 
I'm pretty sure the Great Fairy lives in a shrine somewhere near in town. Where? Look, somewhere! Don't press B for details! I don't come to this town very often. You could try talking to one of those kids who hang around around town. One of them might know where the shrine is. So, welcome to Clock Town. We will be spending a shit ton of time here over the next Let's Play. But for now, we're gonna just start talking to people and get a feel for the place. Huh? The moon? Oh, helpful. Hey, apprentice, don't just stand around looking at the sky all day. Anything up there that's worth seeing? Well, we can press this button here to go into first person mode and look up at the sky. And there's a creepy moon up there. Very disturbing. Uh, we'll talk about more about that in a little while. Uh, who else have we got? We've got a couple of these um, carpenters running around, so let's try and talk to this one. You'll notice there's a little terrier over there. He is not too fond of Deku Scrubs and will wail on us in this form, so let's avoid him. Hi-ho! Hi-ho! It looks like another all-nighter. I wonder if that'll get it finished. Oh! Wait, wait, hang on! I didn't mean to activate this, but here we go. This is my private property! Don't try using it when I'm not around! So, clearly that flower is is off limits. Um, so, Clock Town as a whole is split into four parts. This is South Clock Town. Save your progress up to this point. So, this is an owl statue. They have a number of functions in the game, but the main one is save points. You will notice now it has appeared on the visualizer. Basically, that's one of the things the visualizer will track. In the bottom right, there's a little map thing which will track maps, which we don't have any over the moment, and owl statues so we know where they are. Over here to the right, we now get to East Clock Town. So the main kind of interest in East Clock Town is that there's a lot of shops and little game things here, none of which we can particularly use in our current form anyway. Oh, well, notice, by the way, the bottom of the main screen clock. Um, that shows kind of how much time we've got at the moment, so it's currently quarter past eight on the first day. What, is there something you want from the bombers? We're investigating various events around Termina. It's sort of our thing. Ask and say anything you like. The Great Fairy Shrine? Hmm. I've heard of thing I've heard rumours that it's somewhere in North Clock Town. Why does my Cockney accent always end up veering towards the Australian? I don't know. Either way, juggling blokes here. We're the twin jugglers from the Gorman Troop. We're practicing for the big carnival. It happens once in a blue moon. Or in this year's case, once in a really, really scary red-eyed moon. Oh, I hear it's going to fall harder than the way my clumsy brother is always dropping our juggling balls. You see, we're entertainers. We must keep people smiling. No matter how grim things get, we must be optimistic. Oh, 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 oh. But yes, there's not a huge amount we can do in East Clock Town at the moment, um, because most of the shops are closed or we don't have access to them and stuff, but we will have more access to it as we get on. This guy here is another one of the bombers. If you want to pass away, you have to say the secret code. Um, let's... Uh, sure. It could possibly be one, two, three, four, five. It's not, though. Jim says I can't let anyone in who doesn't know the code. If you're not a member, they won't teach you the code. If you want to be a member, speak to Jim in North Clock Town. Oh, my voice completely fell apart during that. So this is North Clock Town. Um, it's not got a huge amount in it as well, but it's got this, these bushes in the corner. If we attack these with our spin attack, you'll notice you can break them and you get these little green things out. These are rupees. They'll be kept track of on the lower screen and they are the game's currency. I'm gathering five at the moment for a very specific reason, uh, which I'm going to talk to in a second. Firstly, there's this guy here, the leader of the bombers, Jim. What do you want, shrimp? I'm busy practicing with my blow gun. If you can't pop that balloon, then don't mess with Jim. Now go on, scram. Who does that rascal think he is? He thinks he's so smart. Whatever, let's not waste our time on this jokester. We need to visit the Great Fairy as quickly as possible. I know she lives somewhere nearby. But yeah, he's trying to pop that balloon, and there's nothing we can do about that for now. And finally, oh, this guy. I love this game for so many reasons, but one of the things I will never forgive it for is it's the game that introduced Tingle. What's this? Green clothes? White fairy? Sir, could you by chance be a forest fairy? Oh my! My name is Tingle, and I am, think I am just the same as you, sir, a forest fairy. Alas, though, I am already age 35. Why do you need to tell us that? That's not information I ever needed. No fairy has yet come to me. My father tells me to grow up and act my age, but why? I tell you, Tingle is the very reincarnation of a fairy. Now, while I stand here waiting for a fairy of my own, I sell maps to help out my father. Lucky, lucky, you're so lucky to have a fairy. I know, I know, we should be friends. Yes, yes, in exchange I will send you a map to tell you a map cheap for cheap as a sign of my friendship. Will you buy one of Tingle's maps? So he sells maps of various areas. The only one that's particularly useful now is Clocktown, which cost five rupees. Yippee! 
So that gives us a map. It appears on the bottom screen. It also, I'll, I'll have zoomed out a bit of the visualizer to show that. You got a map of Clock Town. Now you can find your way around town. The red arrow shows where you entered, and the yellow arrow shows your current location. Oh, Tingle Lily, forgot, good sir. Do you know how to use my maps? Tap the lower screen to zoom in and zoom out. Tap red on the map screen. There's lots to see here, so be sure to check it out. Well, call again. Tingle, Tingle, Kululimpa! These are the magic words that Tingle created himself. Don't steal them. What a freak. Um, but yes, if we bring up the bottom screen, you can see... We can... Do, oh, no, that's my items. Uh, if we go onto the map, we can... Zoom around the map as if there's not much... Oh, you can actually see a lot more, yeah. So, we're up here in the north, we've been through to the east, we've been to the south, and the final bit there is West Clocktown. But, we know for a fact that the Great Fairy is here in North Clocktown, because one of the bombers told us so. In fact, she's right here. Oh no, the Great Fairy! Yes, it looks like something bad has happened here. Young one, please hear my plea. I have been broken and shattered to pieces by the masked skull kid. Please find the warm stray fairy lost in town and bring her to this fairy's fountain. It's not stuck. Good, I was wondering about that there. It's just a very long healing cutscene. So that gives us a quest for now, which is to bring the parts of the grey fairy back together. And this is something we'll be doing a number of times actually throughout the game. So this is teaching us the little stray fairy mechanic. What we need to do for now is go to the one place- oh! Oh, the map's rotating as I spin around. That's kind of useful to orientate myself. Ocarina of Time did not do that. Um, because so we need to get over to West Clock Town. So if we head this way... Nope, that's South Clock Town. Uh, oh yeah, we can't get to- we can only get to West through South. I'm going to take that map off because it's a bit um, disorientating. Um, there we go. Cool. Nope. I thought I did. There we go. Um, nope. Cool. What the fuck is going on here? Oh, I just literally click on it. Cool. Beep. Back to that. And that onto following mode. That's quite cool. But yes, let's head over to West Clock Town. So, the primary interest of West Clock Town is shops and official places. Um, for example, if we go into this one. If this is the one I think it is. Oh, this is the post office. It's not the one I think it is. By the way, clock's on the wall. Everywhere here has a clock on it. This game, as you might have noticed, there's a bit of a... Time is a bit of a recurring theme throughout Majora's Mask, you'll see. Um, I guess this is the one I wanted then. It's not, is it? Nope, that's the Swordsman School. I'm not having a good time here. It's... Is it even at the top of this one? It's a bloody East Clock Town. Anyone that would think it's fool. Either way. Um, firstly, if we try to leave Clock Town in any way, there's this dude blocking us, and he'll say... Wait a moment, Deku Scrub. Have you some errand at the ocean? It is dangerous outside the town wall, so I cannot allow a child like you to go out alone. Until you are old enough to carry a weapon, you cannot pass through here without being accompanied by an adult. Ugh. What do you want? We bombers aren't looking for any non-human members. Um, the great fairy? I think I saw a little lost looking fairy. It was floating around by the laundry pool. You can get to the laundry pool from the south side of town. If you go there during the day, the fairy should be there. So, we got a location on the final piece of the great fairy. It actually changes position, um, depending on whether it's the day or the night. In the night daytime, it will be where he's just told us. In the nighttime, it will be floating in the air in East Clock Town. You can use one of the De Deku flowers to kind of leap up and grab it. You'll notice now we've come full circle. We're back in Clo South Clock Town, and the only place we can still connect in the bottom left of the map is here, the laundry pool. So there's a couple of things here. There's a frog, remember that for later. And there is a doorbell. If we ring the doorbell, those with this ring the bell. No solicitors from the curiosity shop. So upon ringing the doorbell, that dude emerges. You know, kind of look around, he's wearing a mask. That's kind of a thing in this game that a lot of people do. And if we go up and try and speak to him, he will always run away and hide behind the door. He's going to become important way later on in the game. For now... Please, please, hear my plea. The mask stuff has broken me apart and scattered my pieces. Please find a way to return me to the fairy fountain in North Clock Town. So one thing you might have noticed there as well, not only have we got the Grey Fairy, which is great, the Stray Fairy even, but Deku Link can't swim. He can just hop across the water's surface, but note with the A button where it says attack. You can only hop five times, and then... You are reset. Hey, don't you get complacent just because your body's made of wood. You don't want to drown in some stinky pool, do you? I'd say you can probably skip along the water's surface up to five times in one go. Be, be careful and just don't underthink it. Just go, go, go. By underthink it, I of course mean overthink it. 
But yes, with the Great Fairy got, uh, the Stray Fairy even, let's return to the Great Fairy. Tattle, you and the young one of altered shape. Thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. I am the great fairy of magic. I thought that mass child was helping me and I grew careless. All I can offer you now is this. I shall grant you magic power as a sign of my gratitude. Please accept it. <laughs> So that gives us magic power. Look at the top right of the visualizer and you'll notice I'll put a little orange fairy will appear there too. We've got the, the this upgrade from the stray fairy. I'll talk about in future episodes about what is and isn't on the visualizer. You've been granted magic power in your current form. Press and hold B to blow up a big bubble. Press release B to shoot it. Aim with a control stick tight with L. Your magic power decreases when you shoot. Replenish it with magic jars and potions. The man who lives in the observatory outside of town may know the Skull Kid's whereabouts, but be careful. You must not underestimate that child's powers, young one. If ever you are returned to your former shape, come see me. I shall give you more help. Important to remember for the future, that is. But we're going to hold it there. It's always... The first episode of any series is always a bit of a long one anyway, so I don't mind it. In future, I will be roughly aiming for 20 minutes, but especially with a game like this, I will make my decisions based more on narratives than on what's a convenient episode length. And so, yes, thank you very much. We've been introduced to the weird and wonderful world of Clock Town within the um, realm of Termina. We've been cursed as a Deku's Grum, we've got three days. Next episode, we will be trying to find a way back to, a way to find the Skull Kid, get our ocarina back, and hopefully become human. Thank you very much, and good day.